That's good. I can't flatten chest. Yeah, I'm flattening your nose. I can't flatten my nose. Is my nose sticking out? Yeah. Really? Are you lying? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to and not an episode where James eats a million Kinder eggs. Because we've had enough of that. Why do you guys like that so much? Why does it have so many views? I'm a bit worried now. So, today, what are we doing? Well, we're looking at something that I think might be the biggest dinosaur toy that Mattel has ever released. As you may have seen in a previous episode, I unboxed this guy. Here he is, big head. Well, tiny head now is so big, it doesn't even fit in the screen. Sorry, Toast, you're gonna have to move. <laughs> for a second. This is the legacy Brachiosaurus, and if we bring it, there you go. That's that's the that's the best I can show it in shot. It is absolutely ginormous. Once you plug its neck in, you can't take the neck out. So you're kind of just stuck with this absolutely ginormous Brachiosaurus. And you know what? If there was one dinosaur that they were gonna make colossal, <laughs> sorry, can you, <laughs> can you see me? If there's one dinosaur that they were gonna make a colossal version of, it kind of made sense that they were gonna have the Brachiosaur, because then it's kind of to scale almost. <laughs> Two seconds. Take this for instance. We got a little blue, and then we have a little Somebody. yes. And as you can see, the Brachiosaurus completely towers. Above all of them. You know, it's pretty cool to have something like this. I, I remember when I was a kid, most of my dinosaur toys were kind of all the same size, no matter what species. So the fact that, I don't know, Mattel has kind of catered to this, this wonder, this childlike wonder in a way uh, that kids have with toys and they sort of get in there and it's almost like they're the cameraman and they're, they're sort of looking around, pretending, making up stories and stuff like that. And even as an adult, as I sit with these toys on the table right here in front of me, I kind of feel a bit like that way inclined. But this wasn't the only colossal that they made. No, there was another one. In fact, there is three now. I think there's a colossal and Dominus Rex and a colossal blue. But we, that's the world we live in. But I do have another one. My wappy stick. So I'll put Brachiosaurus over there for a second. This is part of one of them. Luckily with this guy, you can kind of undo it. Um, so, and the rest of it is this ginormous bugger. Oh God, it really doesn't balance uh, without having its tail on, do you? No. Wait, which way is your tail? And then we twist it. <laughs> and here we have the, the biggest T-Rex that this uh, Mattel has ever created. Uh, <laughs> Oh my god, I thought this was a big enough table and here we are and we can barely fit two dinosaur things on the table. There's too many of them. The colossal T-Rex, so big in fact, that it can shove dinosaurs down its mouth without a problem. Yeah, there you go. And it poops. <laughs> Hold on, you needed to see what I saw there. Peekaboo! Why are we still here? Ah, uh, don't be shy, there you go. I mean, the T-Rex is kind of cool. It had its own little unique feature where it would just swallow everything. And I think maybe the Colossal T-Rex and Blue also does that. And it was once we got the Colossal T-Rex, we thought maybe that was the only one we we're gonna get. We got blue, um, and then we're like, so we're just gonna get the big characters. We're gonna get Indominus Rex, we're gonna get um, yeah, blue. Um, and the Brachiosaur, this guy, was quite a nice little surprise. It was like, oh wait, <gasps> something we wanted. That's really cool. And then the most recent addition to the Colossal franchise. <laughs> Introducing the newest addition, of a beautiful assistant. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Oh, isn't she gorgeous there? Oh, look, she's married. Oh, good, good, good. Who's the lucky guy? <laughs> Off you go. This is the new... A pato pato plato patosaurus from Mattel. I say new, I think actually isn't exactly new when I've, you know, when I'm making this video, but um, I think it's only came out in the UK. It's not out in the, well, not only UK, but what I mean is it's not out in America or so I've heard. So if you have a look in the box, Far Cry from Kenner's sort of concepty workies, but we do have on the box, um, a, you know, this CG concept of an apatosaur. You get the, uh, is it there? The little kid playing with it. Ah, it's on the, nope, nope, there it is. There you go. So you got some action features. You got a twiddly neck and a twiddly tail. And also the interesting thing is it's kind of 
repeated the same design on the back. However, you kind of want to switch it this way. Uh, no, that way. There you go. So you can have it standing up like that, or you can turn around and have it stood like that, depending on how you want to display the box, if you want to keep the box. Um, but it also does say uh, here that it is 100 and five centimeters, which is 41 plus inches. So it's absolutely massive. Aha! Didn't even need a knife. Look at that. It's not going to be quite as exciting as you'll see. It's just, oh, 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 maybe it will be. Yeah, there it is. I was going to say, where's his head? But its head's right there. Yeah. Never mind. So it comes in three parts. You have the tail. One, two, three. <gasps> hey, look out. It's Nessie. Oh, guy the new. <laughs> it actually does make a good, like, plesiosaurus. Oh, that's sweet. Hello. Ah. <laughs> right, so let's see how we put this guy together. Um, so here we go. I'm assuming this is the front, since the feet are facing this way. Wait for the big click. And now you're stuck with it. Yeah. And there we have an Apatosaurus. Oh my god. It is huge. Actually, do you have a thing on your bottom? You do have a thing on your bottom. The, the beaver babies can scan it, yes. Right, so here is a toy that I don't think a lot of people really expected to happen. The actual friggin' Apatosaurus from Jurassic World. I mean, it's part of the Jurassic... It's part of Jurassic World Legacy Collection? Why is it a Legacy Collection? Is this because it's from a previous Jurassic movie? Meaning the one, you know, the 2015 Jurassic World. I always thought Jurassic World Legacy was for, you know, the, the first franchise, like Jurassic Park, Lost World, and Jurassic Park 3, but this is Legacy as well? I guess if it's not the current one, it's a Legacy. What you can do with this guy, of course you've got articulation in the head, left and right, which is really, really solid, like, yeah. For instance, I actually have a Spinosaurus here, hello. Look how easy you can move that tail. The, the, there's nothing there. I don't know what happened with the Spinosaur when Mattel made this, but its tail has no, no friction. No friction there whatsoever. But this guy. I can whack at that and it won't move. And just to prove to you that it actually does move. There you go. It's like proper solid. And the tail as well is easier. You can definitely feel like some positions lock in. Like that one there. So you don't have as much articulation like with you do with the Brachiosaur, which you can look like it breaks its neck and becomes the hunchback of Brachiosaur Park. And you also have articulation for the legs as well that seem to click into a position where it's supposed to be neutrally standing. I'm just trying to think, like, what other poses can you do? Oh, that's as, that's as much as you can push the front leg. Can he stand on his hind legs? Oh, like a normal Apatosaur could. Hold on. There you go. Look at that! Well, I can't put his front arms down. That's as far as they go. So there you go. That's as far back as they go. And let's see how as far front they go. Frontwards! Yeah. There really isn't too much kind of different poses that you can do with these guys. If I'm gonna be honest, when it comes to sauropods, stuff like that, especially these toys, I think they were created with the mindset of they're just kind of like a statement piece or, you know, a kid's just gonna have it out on a or whatever you know it's not really gonna it's not like an action figure where it's actually gonna be posed and stuff if a kid's gonna move it it's gonna be like Rah! i mean that's what they're gonna do right they're not they're not, not gonna care it's just a huge thing jesus mattel would you stop making huge dinosaur toys <laughs> i'm a big boy i'm not this big though so we have the apatosaur and we have the uh the brachiosaur here also you want to get a close-up here winnie have a look at his head so you actually have um some reflection or reflective material in the head on the eye sorry i should say the head does twist a little bit um and it actually does open its mouth so you get some good little details there on the teeth and the inside of the mouth one thing that i will say that you know mattel have missed out on again unfortunately is the toenails not painted but I mean, I, now I think it's just it, it's just something they're trying to do now. They don't like painting toenails. The Brachiosaur, again, also doesn't have it. And if we bring in, you know, a Velociraptor for scale for the Brachiosaur, that feels right. This kind of scale for a Brachiosaur looks about right. Hold on, let, let me get in frame. That looks about right. I mean, it could step on it. I don't know. That looks about right if it was attacking it. Something like that. But the Apatosaur just seems a bit 
Damn, boy! Ooh, hey, can you see me? Especially if you think, you know, Claire and Owen were, like, nursing its head. So if we were trying to recreate... Hold on, let's let's do it for you, Winnie. Let's recreate the, the scene where Indominus Rex has killed the Apatosaurus. I think the Apatosaurus is probably a little bit too big when it comes to the scale-wise. And I don't know why they made it really big. I think they just saw, well, everybody loved the Brachiosaur because it was huge. Well, it was huge because it needed to be huge. But the Apatosaur didn't need to be this big. You could probably have scaled it down a little bit. And maybe some parents would have also thanked you for the space that they would have saved inside their own homes. But let's have a look at the actual sculpt itself, shall we? Um, what do we what do we have to say about it? Lovely. Looks like a wrinkly old sock that's been put over an armature or something like that. Like a skeleton of a dinosaur. You've got all the wrinkles and the creases in the in the right places that you'd expect on the padasaur. Um, you've got like a little bit of the ribs there. It's like it was inflated, it's skin stretched, and then it deflated, and it's just got lots of hanging skin. Um, no chunky apatosaurs here. Looks like it's a bit underfed, I suppose, is what you could call it. Um, as far as the paint scheme goes, I mean, it, the apatosaur in the movie was pretty bland and boring anyway. And I mean, I wouldn't have expected bright, vibrant colors from an apatosaur. And in this case, I'm kind of okay with it. Got enough saturation to its green where it kind of looks okay. Uh, I know when you see a lot of the, um, the Jurassic World toy line uh, from Mattel all together, they all have the same kind of pastel look to them. The Apatosaur kind of looks all right on its own. There isn't really much else to say. He's got very wrinkly kneecaps. The sculpt is great. Um, there isn't, like, of course we haven't had butter toes since Hasbro. Uh, the articulation is good too. You can definitely get some, some poses. I mean, you're not gonna get anything that's, t like, apart from moving the head left and right and this as well with the tail, maybe tilting the head a little bit. But you've got, like, a little ball joint there on the head, so you can just do whatever you want to it. And of course you can open its mouth as well, which looks very brittle. I wouldn't be surprised, look how thin bit of plastic that is. I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, a kid You've got some apatosaurs with no bottom jaw, if I'm gonna be honest. Because he's gonna wee! And just that's gonna snap off within two seconds. I can already feel it bending, and I'm really not applying too much pressure there. It's not like with the Brachiosaur, I was like, oh, that's great, yes. Brachiosaur's huge, it looks like it does in the movie, it's got a great sculpt from the head. Apatosaurus was just kind of like, it had that one moment with Claire. And that was it, really. Uh, uh, the Brachiosaur had at least two moments in Jurassic Park, and the Apatosaur was like, oh, it was in the gyrosphere, and then it, it, you know, it gave Claire some sort of character development, and that was pretty much it. Well, you can kind of see it in scale against a Spinosaur, say it from the same legacy line, actually, now that I realize they're legacy and not, um, what do you call it? They're not, uh, colossal. That's the right one, Whitney. Thank you there. Lovely jubbly. Uh, you've got that. And then, I mean, it actually might be in scale with the T-Rex though. Like the, the colossal T-Rex could be in scale with it. And then the Spinosaur is a little bit on the small side, but if we switch that out for the T-Rex, that really works. You could see the T-Rex sort of like biting down on that neck and taking it out. Yeah. Okay, so we have a toy line <laughs> that is in scale, but you need a friggin' football field to play with it, <laughs> apparently, because it's massive. What has this become? And little, little toys, and now I can't even see the bloody camera through the amount of different dinosaurs or the sizes of them. And this isn't even all of them. There's an Indominus Rex and a friggin' blue, which is absolutely massive as well. <laughs> Attack of the giant dinosaurs, we'll call it. Strange. I didn't actually think that they were gonna, they were gonna fit. You can be like, no. Ah. So that is gonna have to wrap up the video. If you've enjoyed it, let me know in the comments below. What do you think of the Apatosaurus? Does it actually work as the size it is? Could it have been done with it being a little bit smaller? Should it have been twice the size? God knows. <laughs> Until next time, I'll see you cuties later. Bye-bye. Oh,